How do you say hello? <laughs> hello, welcome to my cats and me, meow. <laughs> These are meow rangs, which are meringues, obviously, but they are meow rangs because they are cats, yay! And they are from my book, Bake Me a Cat, which I'm so excited about. So there's like multiple different ways in my book that you can create a cat. And basically with these techniques, you can make any bake essentially into a cat. These meringues are amazing for like decorating anything. You can use them to like decorate cakes or tarts, or you can make a giant pavlova. I've got a recipe for a pavlova in there with all the cat tassels in. So fun, and obviously it's called Pavel Cat. Today though is Meow Rangs and all about these little cuties. Also, um, please do like and subscribe. And also my cat book, Bake Me A Cat is out. I'll put the link down below. So for meringues, it's really easy because you only really need two ingredients, key ingredients. You need ice and sugar, and you need eggs, um, more specifically the egg whites. So egg whites and ice and sugar, and then the food dyes are just for creating different colored cats because you want like you know, orange cats, pink cats, blue cats, whatever. You might notice that I'm using ice and sugar for meringue instead of caster sugar which is a little bit different because most recipes use caster sugar. And the reason I'm using icing sugar is because I notice many times when I use caster sugar and meringues and I'm trying to pipe intricate shapes that when they bake, they sometimes crack. So icing sugar, because it's so fine, or powdered sugar, it's so much more crack resistant. If you can't pipe, I've got an alternative way to create the cats for you. So if you are doing it that way, you can also get like, jams or biscoff or whatever you want, like curds, and swirl it through your meringue cats. Right, cat time, cat time. I kind of aim for around 130 grams of egg whites, but I don't mind if it goes over or under, because essentially whatever number you get, you add double that quantity of icing sugar. So, I mean, I just crack my egg whites on the side of the bowl. Some people do it on the table, but this is just how I do it. Do it however you do it. <laughs> and yeah, just separate out your egg whites and you don't want any egg yolk, cause you know, like if you get egg yolk into your meringue, it's not gonna whip up. Um, same as um, you don't want oil in your meringue. So make sure your bowl is really clean. So I put four egg whites in there and that's 111 grams, 110 grams. So I'm gonna do icing sugar and that's gonna be 220 grams. Add your icing sugar to your egg whites. So I'm just gonna give this a little whisk just to combine it all. So combine all your egg white and icing sugar. And now I'm gonna pop this over onto the hob and heat it in a bain marie whilst whisking. So you don't want the egg white to like cook and make eggs. So that's not a good thing. <laughs> so yeah, heat it over a bain marie whilst whisking. And what this does is it extra ensures that your icing sugar is um, melted and combines in with the egg white. So I've been whisking this over the hob for about five minutes now, and you can see that the meringue's becoming a, a bit more opaque. I'll just keep doing this for another five minutes or so. So for about 10 minutes. Cool, so now that's all heated, you can see it's like uh, more opaque. All you gotta do is whisk it. Obviously, if you don't have a stand mixer, you can just do it with a handheld electric whisk. Yeah, and just keep whisking until it reaches stiff peaks. Peaky, peaky, peaky. And then the other thing is when you whisk your meringue, you kind of want to create like air in there, but not like giant air bubbles. So whisk on sort of medium high speed rather than like maximum speed. Okay, so this is ready. Uh, you can see that it is all like, I'm gonna do the, gonna do the bowl test, look, look. It's all stiff peaks. It's not gonna go anywhere. Done the bowl test. So you can see when I pull the spatula out, it's showing it's got all these like little peaks. They're not floppy and they're really nice and stiff. Ooh. So there's no corn flour and no cream of tartar in this meringue. It doesn't need it. You can use a bit of cream of tartar. It just helps stabilize the meringue. 
if you want to. And also corn flour can do the same. So now I've got my meringue, I am gonna put some in some different bowls just to color it because, you know, you want like cats that have got like little pinkies and orange and whatever. Whoops. So yeah, you can do any colors that you want and just put a little bit of meringue in other bowls. Okay, and then you're just putting all your colors and all your meringues into piping bags. So I just pop it over a cup, makes it a bit easier. Just gonna add my pink meringue in there. Ooh. Push it down, push it down. I have coloured all of my uh, meringue and it is in piping bags. So now time to pipe and I'm going to show you because there's multiple different sort of ways you can create a cat. So I'm going to run through each one of those. So I'm just going to make sure my baking paper doesn't fly away and just put a dab of meringue around. Um, just to stick the paper down, because otherwise when you're piping, the paper lifts up and it gets a bit like, yeah. So for a basic cat shape, you are gonna have, um, so you have your white meringue in one piping bag and you wanna cut an opening that's kind of not too small, but not too big, but you can change it about depending on what size that you would like your cat to be. Um, hold it about like 45 degree angle to your baking tray. Just gonna squeeze and move the piping bag. Yeah, just squeeze it. You're creating the body of a cat. Yeah, create whatever size you want and then lift. And you're gonna get a little peek. And then on top of the body, you're gonna pipe the cat's head. So just pipe it straight on top of there, whatever size. And again, it's gonna go up in a peak, but that's okay. So to press the peak down, you're just gonna um, dampen your finger with a bit of water and then tap it. Tap, 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 tap. And just sort of tap the head into the shape. Well, just a cat head shape. <laughs> So now you've tapped your head down, you're going to add maybe a bit of colour and some ears. So I'm going to do orange and I'm going to give this cat maybe like a little orange patch here. So just, yeah, just swizzle a bit of orange around. It's going to have a bit of texture. That's fine because you're going to do the same with the water. Like anytime there's any texture that you want to remove, press it down with a tiny bit of water, not too much. So for the ear, kind of place your piping bag into the meringue and wiggle about a bit while squeezing all along and bring it to a peak and lift up. Once you've got the size you want, there'll be a bit of a weird peak, but you use a bit of water and again, tap that down. And smooth any bumps if there is any. And then for the arms of the cat, you're using the same piping bag you did with the ears. So you've got like, with the white, there's a small piping bag and a big piping bag. So big for body, small for details. Um, and you're gonna place it where you want the arm to kind of, well, arm, uh, paw, <laughs> paw to kind of end. And then again, just squeeze and pull back as you squeeze to form that arm. Same again for your feet. So this is a cat that's kind of like sat on its back and like this. Um, one pose. So squeeze, drag down, squeeze, drag down, tap. And then if you wanted to add even extra details, then you can use your piping bags to add maybe like stripes. So just pipe the minimal, like really minimal pressure. Yep. And then you can also add a tail. So squeeze. I kind of like the tails to be a little bit textured because they're like fluffy. So <laughs> for adding the face of the cat, you can do that after the meringue is baked, but you can also do it before the meringue is baked. So I've just got a bit of meringue that I've dyed um, black with food dye and a really, really, really tiny hole cut at the end of it. 
So, oh, actually, I'm going to add a pink nose first. So you can use things like toothpick or paintbrush or whatever. And I'm going to use that just to add on a nose or you can pipe it on. I just don't want to use another piping bag. And then the face is kind of what brings it to life. And then add some whiskers. It's all good. It'll look cute because it's a cat. Look, cat. Yay! <laughs> I mean, its eyes are like ones over there, ones over there. Yeah. That is one type of cat you can make, and I will show you the other forms of cats that you could do. to pipe meringue cats but I know that not everyone wants to pipe and sometimes you just want to dollop your cats out there and want big meringue cats and you just don't have the time so this is for you um, so just get like whatever meringue you can swirl some colors in do whatever you want just have it in a big bowl and scoop it up and then just like plonk it <laughs> there's no real technical term on your baking tray or whatever and then this is fun because you can get any like flavors you want so jam lemon curd whatever and put it on your meringue and swirl it through just however you want maybe you want to add like some more dollops so a dollop of meringue here for like a head sort of so you can use all the same techniques you used before, like with the water, pressing down, whatever, but you know, it's like su super like no fat. So you just get your fingers and you pinch upwards to create ear shapes. I mean, you can do it as many times as you like. Just keep pinching around and fiddling. Maybe create some raggedy whiskers. Just a bit more. And then if you want, you could add like a tail. So you just randomly spoon it on, create some textures. And um, you can even add extra flavor. So you can add freeze dried fruit. So I've got freeze dried raspberries and just sprinkle it on top. Piece of freeze dried fruit for where the nose is kind of going to be. And then you're going to bake that along with the rest. Um, it takes a little bit longer to bake because it's bigger. After it's baked, you can paint on the face or use edible eyes for the eyes, paint on the mouth and all that. So I've just piped a few just to show you the different kind of shapes that you can create. You can choose your own colors, your own patterns. You can add sprinkles um, before baking or after baking. Just if you add them before baking, then just check that they are bake safe. I've piped some faces now um, just to show you how that can be done, but you don't have to do that and you can just um, paint their faces on afterwards or stick on edible eyes. If you don't want cracks in your meringue cats, then you want to definitely make sure your oven is low because meringues don't actually, you don't actually kind of bake them, you actually kind of dry them out. So you want to dry out the moisture. So 80 degrees Celsius is what I do. Sometimes I even go like 70 and make sure that your oven is definitely at temperature. So yeah, bake them. The key is low temperature, bake for a long time. These ones are definitely, the big ones will take longer, so like an hour and a half. 
Small ones will be done quicker, so maybe an hour. And then when the meringues are finished, ideally you want to turn the oven off and actually leave them in the oven to cool as the oven cools. But you don't have to do that. Cool, off to the oven. So because those are going to take ages to bake, I have made some earlier. They basically bake up just at the same as when you put them in the oven. You might have small hairline cat cats. <laughs> You might have tiny, tiny little hairline cracks, um, but they will basically look the same as when you put them in the oven. Some of them, like I said before, like this one, maybe you want to add the face afterwards, um, or you want to paint some of these faces after they come out the oven. So just use a little bit of black food dye, get your paintbrush, and maybe a tiny bit of water with the food dye just to make it more paintable <laughs> and just paint your faces on. You can also stick on edible eyes afterwards. So I've got these. I mean, if you just put anything sticky on the back of them because meringue is sugar, so sugar sticks to sugar, so honey, liquid glucose, whatever, um, and just stick edible eyes on if you want. They're really fun. So I hope you go forth and bake yourself Meow Rang Cats and um, do tag me in pictures on Instagram or Twitter or whatever. Um, I would love to see your cats. Meow Meow, bye.